Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So the first thing, I hope everybody had a nice holiday season. I hope you're enjoying it with your friends and family, loved ones, with however you'd like. But um, has anybody managed to stay warm on this freezing cold? I don't think anybody is not freezing in this country. So anyway, I hope you're all staying warm as well. I decided I was going to put out a video today with some questions and answers about the Enovid that we've been talking about a little bit recently on my channel. I will link a video here where I talked about it, first introduced it on my channel. And please understand, if you watch that video, I think you'll understand why I'm being a little bit sensitive about the bots. I don't want to I don't want to say too much. Um, there's also a Facebook group. Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy has an associated Facebook page. And if you go over there and you ask to join the group, that's more of an interactive discussion. And there's been quite a bit of discussion about this stuff since I brought it up. So um, please head on over there and ask to join the group. I'm not only for that reason, but because I think if you like my content, you might like that interactive discussion where people really help each other and whatnot. And then I, I very rarely give this plug, but if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like my content, I, I very much appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I don't do affiliate links where I get all kinds of commissions on this channel, so um, really my only way forward is to grow the channel, and I rarely say that, but I, I, I'm very grateful to all of those of you who have subscribed, and if you haven't, I ask you to consider doing so. So anyway, I, I talked about Enovid Spray a little while ago. This is a product from Israel, it's it's been like the equivalent of FDA approved in, in Israel and in India, I, um, a couple of Far East Asian countries, and I think in the UK as well. And right now there is an, an ongoing large clinical trial, and up until now there have only been small clinical trials, and I've gotten so many questions. Now, I try to be very good about answering every single question. Some people message me, some people put questions in the comments section of the videos, and I try to answer every single thing that people ask. Um, now, no, no, please, that I don't always get a reminder that I've got a question um, or comment from somebody. So if I haven't answered you, it's probably that I wasn't notified. But I, I think that if you look back through my content, I'm, I'm probably one of the better, more committed ones on YouTube that answers everything. So this is generating so many questions, I decided that the QA warrants a video. So uh, the first question is, um, does this hurt? Are there any side effects? Um, so yeah, it does. It even says that in the product literature, it, it does burn a bit when it goes into the nose. This is nitric, N-I-T-R-I-C, -I -I nitric, not to be confused with nitrous. Nitric oxide, N-O, is the chemical compound. And it does a sting going into the nose, kind of, I would call it more of a burn. Um, it's very temporary. I mean, it settles down within seconds. Uh, I've not walked around with any irritation. I've been using it now for several weeks, pretty regularly, not every single day, but sometimes for days at a time, uh, very regularly. So I don't have any irritation or any other side effects from it. This is when it first goes in. You do, definitely do feel it. Um, the next question is, does it like go down your throat or does it do anything to your ears? You know, it's hard for me to say with the ears. I don't think so because I often have trouble with like this ear. Some of you know that this is an ear that I, I did a video a while back. I, I suffered sudden sensory neural hearing loss. I think it was maybe related to shingles, but I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this ear sometimes does feel full. I think, God, I got my hearing back and it's, it's, this, it's excellent, but um, I can't really blame that on this spray. I also noticed, do, you, do some of you notice that wearing an N95, that creates a certain amount of pressure. And if you're wearing an N95 for periods of time, I think that can create some nose ear pressure problems. Again, I'm, I can't really blame this spray. I haven't noticed any difference in my ears. If that answers the question, I think that's probably the best litmus test is I haven't noticed any difference in my ears since I started using this. Does it go down the back of the throat? Yes, it does. Um, now, you're supposed to inhale gently when you spray this in. The reason is you don't want it all dripping down and just coming out of the nose. You don't only want it in the lower nose. You really want it in the very top where um, people tend to inhale viruses and they tend to stay up there and that's where the virus tends to replicate. Um, and also in the back of the oropharynx. So you are supposed to really breathe in gently so that you can really wedge it up in the oropharynx. And I think feeling a little bit of dripping come down in the back of your throat, especially after you know a minute or two, is probably a good indication that you got it up into the oropharynx. And of course you can feel if it's up in the nose. I tend to do this, I close my nose for just a couple of seconds to kind of make it stick wherever it is. Um, you don't want to inhale so hard that you're breathing it into your lungs because it's not really, I, I don't know, that's just not the way it's meant to be. I mean, sometimes you wonder, well, what if you did? Maybe it would help if something went down into your lungs. But um, that's the instruction is 
that you, you don't really want to inhale it that deeply, like an asthma inhaler or something like that. So I inhale enough that I kind of feel it go up. <laughs> and, and when I feel it go down in the back of my throat later, I know I kind of got it in the right place. So it's a, is that uncomfortable? I mean, not really, just a little bit. You feel like a little bit of liquid, just like you would if you had a little post sinus drip, except this goes away in like, you know, 30 seconds. So yeah. Um, the next question is people are asking about the dose. So there's a couple of different dosing regimens for this. Now, if you look at the product literature, it says just for general preventive um, pur bleh, purposes that you want to use it two sprays in each nostril. So one, two, three, four, twice a day. So roughly 12 hours apart. And that's just for basic maintaining some prophylaxis. But then if, if you look elsewhere, like you look at the small clinical trials that have been done already, uh, they used a different dosing regimen for a known post-exposure, a high-risk post-exposure prophylaxis. So that was a study done on university students that were people were roommates and one roommate tested positive and the other person had been exposed to them with no masks on for a certain period of time at a certain distance and it was considered um, a high-risk exposure. So for high-risk exposure and then also for a therapeutic, so people who are already testing positive uh, for mild COVID, for those two groups, they in the clinical trials, they used uh, six times a day. So that would be every four hours. Now, if I had a known uh, exposure that I thought was a high risk exposure, or if I were sick and tested positive with this, I would be using it six times a day and I would be evenly spreading it around the clock. Um, I would be doing an every four hour thing. Uh, so I would probably do six, 10, two, six, 10, two, because that would only require me to wake up once where it's not roughly a time that I'm awake anyway. Um, again, I'm, I'm just gonna insert my usual disclaimer here, which is that I'm not giving any individual medical advice on this channel and nothing that I say should be deemed a substitute for the advice of your own practitioner. So certainly talk to your own practitioner about it. Um, the other question um, people asked me was, did I know of any health conditions or any contraindications for this? Um, the only thing that I saw about nitric oxide uh, had to do with people who already have severe liver disease. So if you have severe liver disease, you're going to want to talk to your primary, you know, your doctor and, and see about um, a risk benefit analysis of using this. I, I probably would stay away from it. Um, I, I haven't seen anything else. Uh, nitric oxide is something that is actually made in your body. It's a byproduct of um, like when you exercise certain aspects of metabolism. So we produce nitric oxide. That's what this is. The, the novelty of this product is not the product itself. It's not that it is nitric oxide. It's actually that um, somebody figured out a way to deliver it in a way that we can put it in some place and make it stay there for a while. Um, that's what's novel about this. Um, nitric oxide is already used in medicine for some purposes. It's widely understood to be antimicrobial. It's broad. So people ask me, um, that's another question, uh, which is that, you know, COVID versus other things like flus, colds, basic coronaviruses and things like that, um, even bacteria. Uh, nitric oxide is broadly antimicrobial. So this is not something that you have to think about, well, if there's a mutation and there's a new variant out there with COVID, um, this is just broadly antimicrobial. So yeah. Um, so how have I been using it? That's a question I get. And there's no straightforward answer because I've been using it different ways depending on where I am. So right now I'm home and I'm, I'm off for a while. And so um, if I'm just home or walking outside or doing things like that, I might not use it at all. Okay. But I have used it now. It is kind of, I, I feel more comfortable with it where even though I'm wearing an N95, um, where now I might go into something that's more crowded. Um, not super packed or anything and not unnecessarily. I'm not like eating in indoor restaurants or anything like that. I still have an N95 on. That's just what I'm doing. I know most people aren't doing that anymore, but I am. Um, I have started to think about the calculus of that, but that's another video. Um, I was recently in Miami where it's kind of the outlier for the rest of the Sun Belt. I think it's because a lot of people from New York go down to Miami for winter break time a lot of families and so the the infection rate in miami was actually high in dade county as opposed to anywhere else in the sun belt pretty much um and i was meeting people now anybody staying with us we were all doing the same thing so um anybody is staying at our place which was just us my husband and i and my daughter 
Um, we were using N95s when we went inside places, um, but I decided that just because so many people were coming and going and um, I was, I met my future in-laws and things like that. And it was just a lot of moving parts and people going different places and things and lots of people and friends, old friends of ours that have a place down there that just flew in from somewhere overseas and we got together with them a couple of times. And so I decided that I was going to amp it up. So instead of using the dose on the, on, on the literature, which says twice a day, right? So once in the morning, once in the evening. I decided I was going to do something that was a little more like the dose that was used in the clinical trials for post-exposure prophylaxis uh, or for therapeutic. Now, I didn't go so far as to take it six times a day and wake up in the middle of the night because I didn't have any reason to do that, but I started to use it four times a day. Where did I get that? Out of the thin air. I don't know. I just felt like it made sense since it's a pretty, it's a benign thing. So I felt like it made sense to use a little more than the twice a day. Um, yeah, the cost is an issue. People have said to me, look, this is just ridiculously expensive. I get that. This is not a cheap product. I, I don't really have an answer for that. Um, you know, I've, I've decided that this is a priority for me that I'm going to keep it around. Um, I think that if you, you want to get some, uh, if you don't open the individual vial. So if I hadn't opened this, it would have like this little blue plug in there and, um, there's cellophane wrap around it. Um, if you don't open it, it's, its expiration date is roughly a year out. So I got this one a couple months ago and it says November 20th, 2023. I wonder if they're going to find out that it lasts actually longer than that. I don't know. Um, but if you don't open it, it'll last a long time. I think it might be something that if I felt like this was just cost prohibitive for me, I would keep it around. I would have like maybe two vials around and then just if uh, somebody tested positive or we had a post exposure that was high risk, um, then I could decide to use it. I think that might be a better way to, you know, spend the money. Um, but you'd have to have it. Of course, you'd have to buy it once for that purpose. Now, um, they used to say uh, that it's only good for a month after you open it, each vial. So I was kind of using it really liberally once I opened it because, you know, a month I was, I was throwing it out. Um, but they've recently put out a statement. The company Sano Ties is actually the company that makes the product that's packaged in Innoved. And they said that upon further testing, they found that it's actually good for two months. So maybe it'll be even longer. I don't know. But at this point, they're saying up to two months. And I thought that that just really was a great statement about that company. I thought that just really bode well for me in terms of my trust issue, because they don't have any reason to tell me that this will last longer and not buy any um, extra. So um you could think about that. I guess that would be my advice. Uh, I, I don't want to be insensitive to um, the issue. It, it is a very expensive product. Um, also, if you buy more than one, if you buy only one, you're going to pay a ton in shipping. And one thing about this company is the shipping is pretty slow. I don't know if that has to do with the shipper or if that has to do with, you know, customs, but um, the shipping is pretty slow to the United States anyway. So um, buy two and then you don't pay like another half a bottle worth for shipping. Um, and then you have them and it, you can just use them for something like a high risk exposure or for treatment. Um, I would love, here's my cue <laughs> for your A. Um, I would love to hear people's stories about how they're using this and, and any, just anecdotes about success with it or not. I'm, I'm just waiting with bated breath for the large scale clinical trial to um, com be completed and see some reports on that, but I think that's going to be a long time. Um, I, I would love to hear your anecdotes. I have been following the reviews on the product, like I said in a previous video, and they're all excellent. The only things that people are saying that's negative is A, it burns, B, um, shipping issues, something that was crushed. When, you know, I, I don't think that's really a reflection on the product. It's like an unfortunate price of doing business. Um, their customer service is very good, and I have read some anecdotes where, oh, I stayed in a place and somebody else got it and I didn't get it. Of course, I don't know that person's history. I don't know if they just had an Omicron breakthrough infection, which seems to be the most protective of all the different ways to protect yourself. It seems like right now they're saying the most protective uh, state you can be in is to have had two doses of an mRNA vaccine with a booster and then at some point later an Omicron breakthrough. Uh, those people seem to be wildly protected. So I don't know, gives us something to think about, right? Um, but I'd love to hear your stories if you have any. I, I have heard from some people on the Facebook page saying that they actually went to Israel. They found this. Some people said it was hard to find. Some people said it was all over the place. 
Um, but I, I'd love to hear your anecdotes about how it's working for you or if you have any read on that. And I'm particularly interested really in the therapeutic aspect. This is going to sound surprising coming from me. I'm not as interested in the, ther in the preventive aspect. I'm, I'm wondering if anybody's had any um, experience with this, um, using it right away after testing positive. Um, they say that in the early clinical trials, like 99% of people test negative within three days, which sounds like too good to be true. Um, but I, I hope that the larger scale trials show the same. So anyway, I hope this clears up some of your questions. Let me know if you have any others. And I'll hope to hear some of your stories about using it, not using it, the good, bad, and the ugly. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.